Adventure. It's a privilege that the Ministry of Housing and Water can come into your community this afternoon to interact with you and give you some brief remarks. At the head table with me, I have the Honorable Minister within the Ministry of Housing and Water, Minister Susan Rodericks. To her left, we have our Corporate Secretary, Ms. Jordan. To her left, we have Mr. Garnett from Lands and Survey. And to the Honorable Minister's right, we have Mr. Gladwin Charles, who's the Deputy Director of Community Development Department. At this time, I will hand the microphone over to Mr. Charles, who will give you a brief remarks. Thank you. Staff of Central Housing Media, on the fighting, and most importantly, residents of Bachelor's Adventure, or we say Beirut, and all this. You know how uh, I was reading on Beirut, and you know how you give Beirut that name. So I was reading something that Mr. Sullivan, I think he did a talk interview years ago, and he mentioned that when we started here, everybody had to clear the black sage and be coming in to clean and you're talking about just beer root to find it beer root R O O T. So you you started from there and now over twenty something years, something you know how long you're here and we've been interacting with you. It has been a very tremendous task, challenging. Sometimes we would fall out, we would I wouldn't say argue, we would discuss you're frustrated and so much thing, not only you, but we are at housing as well, because sometimes you come to us, we keep telling you ranting over and over for nothing at all, because and you leave the office frustrated. And over the past week, um, well, even before then, uh, we were working, advising you with lands and surveys, and you know, Mr. Garrett and his team, they've been working, trying to finalize a plan where we have issues, and We've completed one part of it. Minister would brief you on that. And um, you would already know from the field work recently for the past week from Saturday on, Ms. Sukram and her team, they've been going house to house doing a verification. And we're at a stage now where mm -hmm. we can tell you something different from what we were telling you all the years. So I'm happy that I'm still part of the exercise and that we can tell you something different today. So I would like to welcome every one of you, and sorry uh, for being late. I know you waited, and you've been waiting for years, so, and we got you waiting a half an hour now again. So let me apologize for that. So without saying anything more, maybe if there are questions after, I might be able to answer some. I would like to introduce Minister Susan Rodriguez, who is very, she is, she is behind us. To, all the outstanding issues and squatting areas and housing scheme, but we, we in the community development department, we have, we you know we prepare stuff and ministers ensuring that 
things happen. So I wouldn't want to say more than what she would want to, what she, what she would say to you. So I would like to invite Mr. Sue Don Rodriguez to, to give you a few remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Charles. Let me acknowledge the, the head table as you heard them being introduced already, and to our chairperson, the staff of Central Housing and Planning Authority and GWI, who are here, members of the media, and of course you, the most important people this afternoon, the residents of Beirut or Bachelors Adventure. I am extremely pleased to be here this afternoon. I was introduced, if I can say that, introduced to the community um, a few weeks ago when um, tragedy struck the community and there were some very high winds that destroyed a few of the homes and caused damage to others within the community. And through a joint effort with the CDC, I came along with the Minister of Health and representatives from the CDC and we delivered some zinc sheets. And during that engagement, we recognized that some of the structures were very badly damaged. And in two cases, I think, the entire homes were destroyed. And so I committed then that we would assist, further assist, those persons to rebuild and um, in one case where there was just one elder woman alone living and nobody to help her, we committed to help her with the labor as well to rebuild her home. So all of those persons have received their materials and for those whom we committed to assisting with the construction that is already in progress. But I was very struck by the coming together of the community when I came to do the walkthrough and to do the assessment because some people had already improvised and when I asked them, well, how did they fix it back so quickly, which was like within 24 hours because we came the very next day and persons had already patched back their roof and they said the members of the community assisted them. So, I, I could tell right away that this is a very close-knit community that you look out for one another. And I was told a number of uh, police officers live within this community too. So, and, and the effort was really commendable in the way you were able to come together to, to help each other rebuild and, and to, to restore some form of dignity after tragedy struck. But it was also on that occasion that when I was walking through the streets, um, a young man approached me about the status of the regularization for this community. And um, it had not been brought to my attention before, but the moment I contacted the Community Development Department, Mr. Charles and Ms. Supram, who I'm sure you're all familiar with because they spent a lot of time and a lot of years in this community trying to get this regularization process to completion. And you know, you may have heard us saying at the Ministry of Housing that our emphasis, our primary focus is on home ownership. In many cases, we have people who are waiting for their house lots, for them to have a physical place that they can call home. On the flip side of that, you have communities like this one, which has its origin through informal settlement. You have a physical place you can call home, but you also do not have ownership because you are waiting on your title documents. So. We cannot forget you either. And that is why we have committed to ensuring that all of those communities that are outstanding in terms of regularization, that we bring that to completion in the shortest possible time. So when I spoke with Mr. Charles and Ms. Sukram, 
I said, I'm in Beirut. These people have been waiting for over 20 years. It must be completed now. They said to me, we've been, they said to me, we've been working. And, you know, incredibly, as God would have it, just a few short weeks from that visit, we were able to finally get the plan approved for Bachelor's Adventure. And this is the plan you see before me here today. Before the end of this year, it is our intention to ensure that we take you through the documentation process, that we finish this regularization, and that over 300 occupants of this community must receive their title before the end of this year. Now, there is a challenge that we always face in squatting areas. And Mr. Charles alluded to it before. You know, sometimes we quarrel and, you know, we, we disagree on where the boundary should be and, and who's occupying where and how much land and all of this. And that has been the main reason that a lot of the regularization has been stalled because we don't work with each other. We don't cooperate with each other. Everybody thinks about themselves alone. And then if you have one person not cooperating in this bigger process, it stalls the process. And then you lose that momentum. I do not want that to happen in this case. That is why I started out by commending this community with the effort I saw earlier this year when your fellow neighbors faced that challenge with the high winds when their homes were destroyed. I look forward to that similar type of cooperation this time around. So in order for us to get to the end of this process, where each and every one of you who have an outstanding title to receive, we have to work together. I am committing to you that you have my support. And right now, we are very anxious and eager to get this process done, and we've set a timeline for ourselves. So we are ready. We're willing to work with you. I'm asking for your cooperation so that we can get this done together. There are some people in the community that had received titles uh, uh, some time ago, um, but that was from a, a plan that was faulty. So we had to execute a different plan. We had to complete a different plan based on your occupation, how you occupy. And we had to set back the boundaries and make sure that we got an accurate plan, a plan that reflects on paper actually what is on ground. We have completed that plan. So those who receive titles under the, the previous plan, will have to work with us. Now, I don't know if some of those people are here because they may have felt, well, they have their title already, so um, they're good to go. That's why I alluded to the need for us to work together. Because those who have, who received titles before, some of those titles may have to be altered because of how they occupy, so the physical space, as well as the lot number may have changed on this final plan. And so we have the, the, our attorney here with us who is going to work with you along with the community development department to ensure that we receive back in our possession those titles and that we can make the corrections so that everybody else will be able to receive their titles. Now one person can interrupt this process. So I'm making a public plea for us to work together. I want all 300 people, 312 to be exact, to receive their titles. Because I know many of you, after waiting over 20 years, you're advanced in age now. And you want to sleep peacefully at night when you go to bed. You want to know that if something happens to you tomorrow, 
that your son or your daughter who's living with you wouldn't get put out or wouldn't lose possession of that home. You need that security. You need that peace of mind. And we want to help you to do that. We have the resources. We have the will. We have the people. All we need now is your cooperation to get this done. So I'm urging you to please work with us to get this done. I know that a number of roads within your communities need upgrade and I can tell you that recently and you may have seen it in the news as well we went out to tender um, an interagency approach from the Ministry of Local Government and Regional Development the Ministry of Housing and the Ministry of Public Works and these three ministries combined have gone out to tender for over 1,000 roads, community roads. And Bachelor's Adventure will see six roads to the tune of $407 million being upgraded in this community. I want you to understand too that when your government, the PPPC administration, speaks about a one Guyana, it's not a gaff concept. I want you to understand that we mean what we say. And when we make a commitment, it is backed by plans and action. And we, have the res and we make available the resources, the financial resources to get it done. You have our commitment with that. We're going to work in every single community to ensure that everybody feels part of this plan. Our development plan and our vision for a one Guyana and for bringing development to every single country involves, in every single community, involves every single person. We want to be able to personalize our delivery of services in government and we want to be able to positively impact and touch your lives. That's what we want to do. We've come from a history where Guyana was a poor country and agriculture was our main export, was the main contributor to our GDP. Now we have access to more resources and we have laid out a plan for this country on how we're going to deliver development to every single Guyanese of every race, of every religion, regardless of where you live. Even if you're an Amerindian living in, living in the hinterland, or you're all the way in Bachelor's Adventure, or you're in Pukwani in Linden, or you're in the quarantine in Barbies, wherever you are, we're going to reach out to you. And no community is too small for us to go and spend resources and come and meet with you. Take, for example, the water sector, which we have been working extremely hard in terms of delivering better quality water service. Now I know there are issues in this community. I asked for the analysis of this community before, um, before today, not only today, but we asked what are the where are the communities that are most challenged? Bachelor's Adventure was one of them. You receive a level of service, meaning level of service means the pressure of water that you're receiving. You receive about three to four feet of water. That's not ideal. It's not an ideal situation. First thing we have to do is improve that. Secondly, we want, we have a target that we want to reach, and that is by 2025 to improve the coverage of treated water from 52% is what it is now to 90% by 2025. And in order to do that, that's right, sir. And in order to do that, we have to do an analysis of every single community. So I'm pleased to also inform you that we have already designed a project, we have already went out to tender, and we have already awarded a brand new water treatment plant 
to the tune of 7.8 million U.S. dollars for our bachelor's event. A water treatment plant, which means that all of the iron content and all of the sediments in your water will be removed. You will receive water where you can put your glass under the top and drink from it. You wouldn't have to spend money buying filtered water from the water store. The water stores might go to business, but um, we want to ensure that we deliver that quality service to you. This treatment plant will be constructed just south of the existing uh, GWI compound that we have now, the office that we have at Bachelor's Adventure, the, the well station that we have there. It will be constructed right there and it will cover an area from uh, Collagen to Nabaclis. So treated water will be delivered. So those who are not here from those communities and they're, they're listening to me, all of the residents covering an area from Collagen to Nabaclis will re receive treated water at the completion of this project. And it will also benefit from an improved level of service. So that three to four feet of water that you're currently receiving now, maybe at the standpipe level, um, you can know it will be improved up to 15 feet, which means that you'll be able to get it upstairs without pumping up the water. Work is expected to commence on this new water treatment facility as early as next month. So you can, you can look out for that. And this is what I mean when I say to you that our words are backed by action. And that is what you have to judge leaders by. You know, you don't want people to come and gaff with you. What are you doing for me? If you want me to do something for you, what are you doing for me? That's life, you know? And we are saying to you that we will work in every single community. We want everybody to feel as equals. We don't want anybody to be left out of this process. So in whatever way that we can improve the services, that we can improve your standard of living, improve your quality of life, we're willing to get the work done. Now, all of these things that I've said here is just from one ministry, Ministry of Housing and Water. And I'm sure there are a lot, there's a lot more work to be done in your community. And I'm sure you will be seeing other ministers, leaders coming into your community. And you're going to work with them. And I know you'll work with them because you see that you have a government that is serious about development and that is serious about improving people's lives. And you have our commitment in that regard. And ultimately, we want to live together as one. You know, I was speaking earlier today. I had two cultural functions to attend, one at GWI and one at CHPA, because you know, uh, we have Diwali over the weekend. Diwali is festival of lights. And I know many of you here, every Diwali, you probably go to look at the motorcade and we take the children to see the lights. Guyana is a multi-ethnic, multicultural, multi-religious society. And I'm very proud to be Guyanese. And I'm very proud to live in a country that has such rich culture and rich people from all different types of background. It makes us who we are as Guyanese. And people from all over the world, from developed countries. And I'm a politician, so I can tell you, because I meet them all the time, diplomats and so on, who, are, who come to Diana to serve. They're always fascinated by the rich heritage and the rich culture of Guyanese. And when they go to different communities, they see different ways of life. They see the different celebrations. They love dressing up in their African wear for emancipation and then putting on a, a shalwar or a sari for, for Diwali, playing Pagwa. Every Christmas, Guyanese of all walks of life, from every religion, dress up their homes for Christmas time. Sometimes Hindus and Muslims are the biggest celebrators of, of Christmas. They have the brightest houses. 
And that is because this is how this is who we are. This is what we grow up seeing. This is what is taught to our children in school. From in school we learn that we are a one Guyana. Not only the one Guyana that President Ali has announced. President Ali is calling for us to create a one Guyana because we already know in our hearts that we are one. That's how we grow up. That's what our children is, are taught in school. And we participate in each other's festivities and activities and we enjoy to the fullest. One of the most popular um, events is Pagwa. We all play Pagwa. We enjoy playing Pagwa. So all the 365 days a year, we live as one. And then one event happens every five years. And we want to know what happened? What really happened? This Indian auntie or this Afro uncle and me living all the time, good, good. Suddenly the leaf blow over in my yard and it's bothering me. You know, we don't live like that. Those days are gone and we don't want to see it again. And it's us. It's we that have to change it. I see some young faces in here and we have to champion this change because all these years, 365 days a year, for five years, we're living as one. And then one event announced, elections and madness. Everything that we know within ourselves to be true and right, somehow we allow unscrupulous politicians or we allow dark forces to separate us and to try to paint an image of a country and a society that does not exist. We must stop it, we must identify it, we must call it out. It's not who we are as a people. We are better than that. We are bigger than that. And we will stop that from spreading in our society. It takes each and every one of us to do all the things that I'm talking about. To deliver this program, deliver these titles, for us to install the transmission mains in these communities so you can reach, to, so that you can access treated water and so that we can live as one Guyana. It takes all of us, every one of us, have to come on board to improve the lives of our community. Togetherness. Togetherness, that's right. And I assure you that you have a friend in our government, you have a friend in President Ali, and you know, as he says, he could touch down anywhere, anytime, anyhow. And housing touch down similarly. And we are always happy, I was telling the, the staff there before I came, we are always happy to deliver our services, whether it's at the ministry, whether it's in a school, whether it's a, in a bottom house, or whether it's right here, we drop a big tent on the road and we have a meeting, and we trash out our issues, and we go home, and we look forward to the improvement in our lives. And you have a friend in me, I will be back. I said so the last time. The, the guys on the corner probably didn't believe me when I told them I was coming back, but that's all right. I, don't, I didn't have to stand there and convince them yeah. of something that I haven't done already. Mm. So I didn't prolong the engagement. I said, man, you just watch. You just watch me. But we said, watch the right. Present. You just watch the right. And then we went, we did what we had to do. And I come back to promise you are going to do something now. You will come right here. Some of you could probably identify where you are. And you'll see your, your block number or your parcel number. And let's get this thing done. All right? So I look forward to returning to this community. Remember, we said before year in. We are going to do everything we can, right, Mr. Charles? We're going to set the appointments for you, for you to come into the ministry. We don't want you to wait long. We're going to set the set aside special days and time for you to come in, get the paperwork processed and out of the ministry as quickly as possible. I want to come back here before the end of the year, all right? 
I want to come back and hand over these titles before the end of the year. Okay? I have your commitment that we can work together. Yes. We yes. can do this thing. Yes. That neighbor who might play stubborn when we leave here, you can talk to them for me? Yes. Have to count on that? Yes. All right, boss. You can count on me too. Thank you very much. house that has more than one house. We have two and three houses in the house. And so I don't know how you people are going to go ahead and tackle that because each certificate is for one house and a house lot. So the people who don't have house lots and I have three houses and two houses in a house lot, I hope you can give them the empty ones to our name. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Zanya, and who, who, who's speaking? I can't see. Stand up, please. Yes. Okay. I've been living in Beirut for some time now, and I would like to know how many unoccupied lands are there in Beirut currently. 
because it's unfair to persons like me and younger persons who are renting and paying over fifty thousand dollars in rent every month and when i have to walk and go to work and see these lands unoccupied for months and years and i don't have a land of my own and i have to be paying rent why not mortgage so that i can get something out of that at the end of the day so can you just please enlighten us as young people how many unoccupied lands are there in there and if we can be a part or if we can receive lands before this year because it's very unfair to be paying fifty thousand dollars every month and not benefiting anything as a young person i, I, I hear you all right i would, I would respond Everybody, I'm just making notes. I don't want to stop your flow. I'm making notes and then I'll make one. Okay. All right. Good afternoon, honorable minister. Good afternoon, everyone. I must thank you for being here. But my question is, I was listening closely to your presentation. Um, I'm happy of all the things I heard you're going to do. But one thing I miss is. What plans do you have for those young persons, as my colleague said, who do not have a house up? Good afternoon, Honorable Minister, and members of the head table, good afternoon, the residents of Beirut, the media. Um, I am listening to the minister, and she was well articulated with what she said. I want to ask two questions. One, you said that they will be, they will be coming back to is hoping to issue 300 and something um, land titles. But let's, we are willing to work with you. But let's say for argument's sake that you have two or three persons or more than one in the system that doesn't want to cooperate. I hope that those persons won't hold the process hostage. And then you hear this person is now cooperative, or one or two persons doesn't bring in the, uh, the title for it to be corrected, and because of that, the process is stopped. Some mechanism has to be put in place to avoid a situation like that. Another thing I want to ask, another thing I want to mention, now I know each ministry is allocated, as you said, each ministry is allocated um, a monetary uh, budget from the government and you said that there are a number of agencies that come together in order to to um, to fix our roads so to speak right but I want to ask a question I don't know if it's with, within your capacity I know many years ago we went to housing and we were able to get resources to do roads in Beirut. That was many years ago, right? We went to housing and we were able to get uh, funds to get roads done in Beirut. I want to know, we have two months or more or less, let's say three months before the, the, the year is closed. Uh, two months before the year is closed. But I, I don't know if you have any funding within, within your ministry that is left that you could push in at least. We got two cross streets. They're, they're less than 100 yards. At least with this year budgetary allocation that you have, if you could put in this cross street and that cross street for us. If you can do that, that would be well appreciated because I also read in the Sabbath news that you said that these roads that you talked about earlier is in 2023 budget. So what I'm saying, if you have any funding, even with one cross street, if you could get a contractor to come complete one of them for us, that would be very much appreciated. And thank you. What, what? When you say cross street, is that the name of the street? No, it's the, no, no, Minister. One of the streets. Minister. We don't know the streets this year. This road runs parallel to that road. Yeah, yeah. And, and you got streets going across. And you got streets going across. No, but they have some areas. Uh -huh. that they have the streets. Name is Cross Street. No, I just say Cross Street because. All right. Yeah. No. And they're less than a hundred yards. Right. The roads I mentioned to you uh -huh. were already tendered for. for they are. It will be done this year. It is not for 2023. 
Okay. Right? Fine. So you can look out for that. I see Cross Street, first Cross Street, second Cross Street. I don't know where the physical street is. Uh -huh. But that is the that is the um that's the text that I'm reading for the name of the street. Okay, fine. Alright? Yeah. So I don't know if it's the exact one you're referring to, it may be. I don't know, but I know we have we have report. six streets that we're doing within this community alone, Beirut alone. Okay. Fine. All right? Yeah. So and and those um, were already tender, the tender is closed mm -hmm. and it's at the evaluation stage. So uh, the award will come maybe in two weeks, mm -hmm. and then the, the contractors will mobilize uh, within the month. Okay, fantastic. And pertaining to my other point, we hope that two or three persons, if they are unwilling to work with us, they will hold the process hostage. I'll address all of the matters that Good afternoon, everyone. Greetings to the Minister, Susan Rodericks, and our fellow colleagues that are here this afternoon to deal with the issues of Beirut. Now, my name is Lorraine Tyson Dion. I've been living in Beirut for since 1999. When I first came in Beirut, there weren't many houses in here. Very few houses were in here. And the land that I occupied, I, I made a mistake and I went on another man's land. And came and saw me put a wood across the bridge. And he ran me off, he landed with a cutlass and said, this is his grandchildren's property. I found my rightful land and when I went there, there was a bunch of anti Desmonds and all kinds of stuff. I put a small house there and there were some people that came at night and pushed it down. But because of my determination, I came back the next day and I put the house flat and I moved in. My first lot number in Beirut was 156. Then it changed to 1036. Now it's 1031, which is my official land type, which is my official lot number. Now my problem is, I was living with my children's father. A lot of people in Beirut know this. I was living with my children's father for 13 years. And for the 13 years, he never paid $1,000 on our house lot from the first time housing came in here for us to start payment, that was when they gave us that 156 lot number. That's when we started to make our payment. They took some payment from us, they went out of paradise there at the school, and they collected money. Um, I must say, there are a lot of Rastafarians, worldly, they're very ignorant to the fact that if you don't have papers, you don't own nothing. That's a, that's a discussion I've been having with him for years. Now he left us. When he left us, it was me and my five boys who was left on that land right there. My first payment, it was done because of the boosting from Miss Jackie that is sitting at the head table. She's the person that boosted me. I went into the Ministry of Housing and I paid my first payment. I paid $7,000. $7,000. And that was my 10 or 6 lot that I had, I paid it on. Now, my children, father doesn't live with me for over 10 years. When he left us, my, my second to last son was two years old. Now, he's gonna be 15 years old. So that is the time he's not here. Now I'm having a problem at the Ministry of Housing. My problem is, is that I have to get my children's father to come from in the interior who's in there for over 10 years to come back here to sign a document before I get my papers for my land. Now in my case, I think it's a little bit unfair to me for I have to be paying all the money and then still at the end of the day, he's still playing a part in my land which he's not contributing anything to. So my point is to you, Miss Minister, is that isn't there some kind of proxy that works with people like me, because I'm not the only person that is experiencing this situation, if there's any kind of proxy that could work along with me, so that even if he does come back, there's some kind of settlement that could be done for him, but I can move on, because I cannot be stuck here. I've been stuck there for all these years. 
trying to wait on him to come. Every time I call, there's always some kind of excuse. He's not coming. He doesn't care. And I'm sick and tired of the ignorance. So what I'm asking is if there's something that we done for me and all those other persons that are in my situation. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I could have responded to you a long time ago, but I realized you got a lot of your chest. So you got to get it off yes. your chest. And that's all right. That's all part. That's all part of the process. So I could sit here if you want to talk an hour. I would sit and listen to you because... Even in listening, there is help. Sometimes you just have to relieve yourself, unburden yourself. And that's what she just did. Now I know where, I know what she was going to ask me, but I didn't want to interrupt her. Let she get it off her chest, and then I can tell you that it's perhaps one of the benefits of having a female minister, because I hear you. And many women like you come to me all the time. And those situations, I can tell you, we have a solution for, and we're to ensure it's done, and your rights are protected. I want you to go home and sleep peacefully tonight. I don't want you to study about anybody coming to take away your rights. Nobody will violate you. Right, Mr. Graham? And I'm sure that if that situation is true, which I have no doubt that it is, because Ms. Sukram already said she's aware of the situation. I'm sure your fellow neighbors here, if we have to do a verification, that they can say and stand up and speak on your behalf and say, indeed, this woman alone has been struggling with these children, and it is, it's, she is the one with the rights to that property. So don't worry about that. We're going to start that out. All right? Thank you. Anybody else before I respond to the other questions? Pleasant. Good afternoon to everyone. Um, I have one question. My mother passed away uh, eight years ago, and the lease is in mourning. And presently, I would like to know what is the possible to like get it updated because we um, it's three sisters and one brother, and we all have. I'm now beginning to build my home on the same land because I have nowhere to go, so I need to know what is the procedure to have the land transferred even if it's into our name because nothing hasn't been paid since her passing because I can't find her, I declare. And when I went for a debt certificate, they said that I have to get her I declare to uplift the debt certificate. So I don't know what to do. You know, you don't have your ID card? Her I declared, my mother's ID card to uplift the debt certificate because I had wanted to do that to so bring it into the ministry along with um, the lease paper to know well what to do because I don't know. Oh, all right, so you will speak um, with Mr. Charles and Mr. Sukram after the meeting. Those people who have um, unique issues like yours will remain back and uh, try to put something in place to address that. Um, but the, the, the straightforward ones we will go ahead with. Um, so which brings me to the answer to, to the, the gentleman here when he was asking about whether one person can stall the process. We will not allow that. Happen. We're going to ensure that we move the process swiftly along and, and as far as, as much as we can do with those who have straightforward uh, matters to, to regularize and to sign up for their titles. We're going to move that quickly along. Where we have some challenges, maybe with more than one structure on the land, and if it's family members who are living there, you're going to have to assist us. You know, you'll have, which is why I was calling for the cooperation, because we can't resolve your family issues for you. We can, we can try to resolve community issues, but we wouldn't want two siblings living on a portion of land and, and we are going ahead and disenfranchising one person as opposed to the other. We will see how best we can assist maybe to relocate the other person, but ultimately you will have to talk to each other and, and work that out um, among yourselves. And then we will facilitate Whatever decision you make, we will work with you to ensure that both parties are protected. Let's say in, in your case where there's a sibling matter, and in, in that case as well, 
where your grandmother is deceased, um, you will have to approach the court for letters of administration. You'll probably have to find an attorney to assist you with that because that's a private process. But we'll work with you to, to get that sorted out. That's why I'm saying speak with us after and we'll take your individual matter separately. All right? Good afternoon. I want to say thank you for this initiative. Uh, I am a young professional. And why this means? Why does it have to take so long for you guys to allocate that? Because it's been like a year since I went into the industry. And I got a letter of allocation. I haven't got a word yet from you guys. I tried contacting you guys. I tried actually an entire week. No answer. Where do you live now? I live in Nazir. I do When When did you apply? Last year. Last year. That's a year ago. Yeah. Well, you know, we have a huge backlog in our system. And that's what we've been trying to address. We have a program for young professionals, which is the, the construction of homes for young people. We have the, the low-income homes as well that we have been um, constructing through public-private partnerships to get people into homes faster. Because I said in my remarks, we want to get people to home ownership. We don't want people to acquire a piece of land, just like the young woman in front of you was saying, and not do anything with it. Just have it sitting there, unoccupied. Other people are desperate um, for a portion of land that they can call their own. And people have a piece of land they're not doing anything with. Um, it gets overgrown with vegetation and all kinds of social issues develop from that. Um, that affects the whole community. Now, for the young people who are here who have outstanding applications, we will give those to uh, my assistant who's here, Ms. Bradford. Raise your hand. You have Ms. Bradford there, and you, the young man next to her, Narish. He will take your individual applications and your telephone number, and we will see to address your applications. Um, the young woman raised the question about vacant lots within the community as well. So we still have just a little bit of um, verification to complete. But once the entire process is completed, I will have a report on those lots that are vacant and available. Because sometimes you have lots that are vacant, but that were allocated to somebody. And then you have lots that are vacant and unavailable. They were never given to anybody. And if those, and if there exist lots like that within the community, we will see to give preference to those who are living within this community already which yourself and, and maybe the young woman can benefit from at the completion of the process. All right? Okay. Good. All right, thank you. Don't forget to the, the, the three young people and whoever else has an outstanding application at the end, they will they will come, you just come to the table and we will take your, your application and your telephone number so we can call you in. Anybody else? Good. Oh, all right, let, let, let her go. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Zohandia. I am not a resident of Beirut. Actually, I know nobody here. Mm -hmm. I'm just here today because of the meeting. I have uh, applied over eight years now for... Where where you live? Pleasant. For the And we you know, just we got to deserve our homes. Oh. <laughs> I'm a mother of four. Let me hear you. Let me hear. I'm more yes, I'm a mother of four. And as I said before, I believe as young people, we said 
goals and we work towards them. I have visited um, a meeting at the National Stadium. I met with one of your um, staff. They said they would call me in two weeks. I never received a call. I went back to your office. I met with your secretary twice. She told me the same. I never received a call. I met with Mr. Colin Rose, his secretary, once. I never received a call, so I um, started to visit you at meeting. I'm glad that I actually got the opportunity to speak to you. Because I currently occupy a land with my father, with several other siblings, and I just want a land so that can build a home for myself and family. I right. am a mother of four. For eight years, this time you get yes, I applied on the 18th of March 2014. I'm committing that to you. Thank you. You're welcome, Listen, you're welcome. I have a pleasant look for you. You see the flyer, and you can't. You know how to find me. I can't find you. So please give, give the young man your information. And I'm going to bring you back here before the end of the year so you can testify. All right? Anybody else? Oh, yes, it did. The young woman wanted to say something. I'm sure. Oh, who has a mic? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Judith. And I'm living in Beirut. But the problem is, my children call me a breakup, and yet I read it on papers, and I don't do My life is cut off, and I can't get it, we gotta get a lot of to change. So I went into housing, and the day two after came, the young girl called me. She never turned off. So I you, know, you physically occupy the, the lot? Yes, ma'am. And where does the land live? is in Nitova's name? Right in this community? Yes, yes ma'am. And he doesn't live with you? No, he lives in Kirkro. And who is who's the division? Uh, nobody. Me and yeah, my kids Me yeah, and my kids living together. But they say we have to go in to sign up for the house lot. I can't get no no light. Right, so if if you don't have the allocation letter, which we have to give to all of these people here now, before they sign an agreement of sale, they get an allocation letter, an agreement of sale, and then your title is processed. So the GPL would come, GPL would install um, using the allocation letter right. in place of the agreement of sale and the, and the title because they know that takes takes some time. So we'll have to, to see if your parcel falls in this 300 or if it's in the, the, the 100 outside of this. Okay. But, yeah. but um, we will say, um, by the way, all the people who are raising individual issues, please don't go anywhere, right? Because I know you're telling me here, but I, I need your information for them to come and ground, see what's happening. And then um, even if it's outside of the 300 bills, we'll, we'll do an intervention. We don't want a, a, a mother with kids to be out of this. So we'll, we'll come up with something to get your electricity installed. All right? And for persons who are living under difficult circumstances and they don't have the legal documents um, to, to participate in the ongoing program that you guys have, I think it's the building subsidies, if, if I'm correct. Um, is there uh, an next process in which that they can take part or they can benefit from that? Because there are a lot of persons who are squatting with kids, and they, the, the building they need is cleaned out, but they're too afraid. We'll, we'll have to look at it on a case by case basis. So whoever the person is, if you know the person, let them let them come, let them approach us. 
Thank you. All right, and, and we'll do we'll do it on a case by case basis. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm here to find out. I mean my name on the transport. And, and who is uh, you were there or he's there? I'm there. She oh, where's he? She look under the place and do everything. 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 He disappeared years ago. Okay. I have my right to the Alright. Oh my right. I hope GPL watch him. Alright. So let's ask you Yeah, I know he's struggling. She know you business for a minute. Big investigation, we'll start coming to Beirut and find out what's going on. All right, okay, the, we will we, we can address that. One more thing, Mr. Yes, sir. There is a woman sitting here for the past 12 years. Myself and her been running to your ministry uh -huh. to try to reach you, our senior minister, for 12 years. To have all the papers that you people say is required. She's afraid to stand up and down because she's the type of person. I'd like you to listen to her or look after her matter. Is Only different, last is different week, from what we're doing here? No. She houses in the house lot and her mother abusing her every morning in the baby to cost him to get her out of here. Please help that woman here. Every time we come in housing for 12 years. When, when the president was the minister of housing, we went and bed. Uh, 2010. From then to now, to have all the papers in the bank, so I can get up and talk to you. All right. I'm pushing out to get up. You gotta, you gotta talk. You gotta talk to me. And you gotta talk. To, let's talk so we can we can sort out all of these matters. But it falls within the area anyway, so that will have to be addressed in any case. So come on, there's a lady with the yellow cup. Be afraid. Yes, All right. You'll, you'll come and speak with us after, right? With the individual issues. You see why I like this area? Your neighbors defend them fiercely. So I got, I'm getting good vibes from this area. We can, we can do things in this area. There's a raster. There's a raster, man? Oh, oh. No, they're just using the raster. Okay. Alright, so we're going to have to go to the other one. What's that? I don't see you. I know raster, man, is not like that. It's like a shock. Some of them are. 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 Some of them